Okay, so here I am in my kind of main account, so I can show in. And in this one, I still don't have the right billing information entered in, but you know, I've at least gone through the whole setup process. Uh, and one small note you might notice throughout, it has euros, that's because when I first set up this account, I set it up while I was uh, teaching a marketing class in Germany. And so ever since then, uh, Google thinks I wanna pay in euros, which is kind of funny. As far as I can tell, there's, there's no way to change that option. It's not a big deal, right? Like money is money in the end, so they'll just use the conversion rates. Uh, but what I promised you I would show you is first of all, how to create a campaign if I want to create one just from scratch in the fully developed version. So I can click on campaigns, Right? I can click on the big plus sign to create a new campaign. I can also load some previous campaign settings. I then have an option whether it's a search campaign, a display campaign, a shopping campaign, which is affiliated with the Google Shopping, a video campaign on YouTube, or um, a universal app kind of campaign that works across a lot of Google networks. And right now I'm just gonna create the basic search campaign. Um, you can try and select the goals. In my case, let me see, I just wanna go for website traffic. Um, continue on, right? I then get a chance to choose, give it a name. So let's say market research introduction. So I'm just introducing people to my market, market research offerings. Um, I can say whether I wanted to go on the search network and Google search partners and whether I also wanna go on the blog and other sites, videos, apps, other things. And so let's say, yes, sure, why not? And now here I can select the location. So I, you know, it's defaults again to, um, uh, to the United States and we can add in, you know, Durham, Chapel Hill, et cetera. In fact, uh, I believe you can, yeah, and we could enter in, you know, let's say we wanted to get Charlotte in there as well, right? Um, and so now we have, you know, 17 million users. And then Charlotte, I actually entered in the Nielsen DMA region. We could enter in the Nielsen DMA region for the triangle. I believe it's like Raleigh, Durham or something like that. So um, select the ink language. Again, you can select the, the amount you wanna pay per day. Um, and then you can select how your strategy and your strategy can be either it may maximize clicks. Um, you could also maximize conversions if you have it set up with analytics so that you can tell that someone has actually uh, worked, uh, connected to the website and made a download, in which case it will try and only target those users who are likely to result in conversions, right? Or bid higher money for users who are more likely to survive the result of conversions. You can also just do it ma manually yourself. So you just set up your own manual, what you're gonna spend uh, per cost per click. Um, Google tends to recommend you use the maximize strategy. They think they know better about this than you do, and for most beginner marketers, they probably do, right? So we'll just say maximize clicks. We can enter, let's say we never want to spend more than four euros for a particular customer, especially if we're spending $10 a day, 10 euros a day, that seems relevant, right? Um, you can add additional extensions. So site link extensions are those deep extensions that you can add in. So you can add in sub pages that you can also link to in the ad. You can add in additional information like amenities or um, the various other kinds of call outs that exist. Um, and you can add a phone number so that people can directly call, right? Um, and there's, there's a whole bunch of additional extensions you can add. You can make it so that the ad only shows up at night and so forth. So all of that is in here completely, right? Um, one other thing, right, besides, um, yeah, no, that's fine. We'll leave it at that right now. So. So we'll save and continue on that. And so then you be, be, so we have campaigns. Campaigns are made up of many ad groups. Many ad groups are made up of many ads, right? Um, and the do and so we can create an ad group. So we could say, you know, first ad group for market research. And this is here is where we're going to start to specify the keywords we're going to use. So we might say market research. Um, digital marketing, marketing analytics, right, as our keywords. And we can save that and continue, right? And now we have to create an ad within that ad group. And so we could again use billrand.org, right, as the final URL, uh, innovative marketing research. Cutting edge 
the analytics. And here you see, at one point we talked about in the search engine optimization uh, video about having the ability to do subpaths. So we can then say billmorand.org slash marketing slash analytics, right? Um, and of course, this doesn't actually have to be a real path. It's just the display path. So it can map to something else later on. And then we could fill out the description. Uh, we use the most uh, advanced analytics to solve your marketing problems. Done. Now we have our little ad. It's right there. We can create many, many ads if we want. And we can go ahead and go to the next thing. So once you've created the, the ad and the ad campaign, right, then you can go back to all campaigns, which you can reach from the little pullout window. It's just right down there, all campaigns. And eventually, if you scroll down, you'll find the campaigns bubble. And for me, because I've created a bunch of ads in this campaign, it's actually not on the first page. I have to scroll down to like the fifth page and then you see market research introduction, right? So now if I click on that, it'll show me the overview information. It's enabled, it's a search ad, it has a budget of 10 euros a day. Um, this will eventually show performance numbers once it starts running. Here's the, the keywords associated. Here's um, how much it's cost me to use that keyword. How's my clicks I've gotten, my click through rate. So number of clicks divided by number of seen, right? What the actual ads are that are shown, where it's targeting, um, and so forth, right? Um, and here I can actually, so the, the basic setup actually has you do some targeting, right, based upon keywords and, dem and, and where people are located. But here I can actually do a little bit of refinement to as well. So for instance, on the demographics, let's say, you know, no one under the age of 24 is gonna use my digital marketing, just speculating, right, that maybe they will, but I can exclude them from the ad group, right? And so therefore now I'm only targeting people over the age. And maybe, you know, maybe I also don't think anyone uh, over 55, which is probably not true, is going to use it, but I could also exclude them, right? So now I'm only targeting people between 25 and 54. I can also do it on a gender base. I can do it on a household income base. Um, I can, you know, various, do various combinations. Um, you can also try and uh, specify a particular audience, right? Um, so, this is uh, trying to focus in on particular uh, categories or particular individuals who might see the ads, right? Um, so for instance, it lets you target ads to people based upon the, their inches or sites they visit. So if you only want people who have visited other digital marketing sites, you can do that, right? Um, you can look at where the ads are being shown and this will eventually show up here. Right, um, and, and so forth. And so you can eventually control everything. I can control what devices it shows up on, right? I can also see, right? So this is both, I can use this for targeting, but I can also see which people are seeing my ads, right? Uh, so that's all very good and well. But let's say you're at that very beginning stage and you don't even know what keywords you wanna use. Well, if you go to this little tool symbol and then uh, you go down uh, to planning, Right, one of the tools is the keyword planner. And there's a couple others in there. I highly recommend you look them up, right? But here, let's say I wanna find new keywords associated with digital marketing. I can just type in digital marketing. I can hit get started, right? And I'll get a whole bunch of keywords, right? And what you'll see here is that I have the keyword, I have the competition, I have the average number of searches, uh, right? I have the top of page bid low range, top of page, page bid high range. And so this is because at different times of day with different competitions, right? You're gonna see different competition for those keywords, right? So some people are actually bidding for the word digital marketing, and I always do that, sorry. Digital marketing. Some people are actually bidding up to, you know, 13 euros, right? Which is, um, a lot of money per first single click, right? Anyways, this is a very powerful tool. I can even download this data as a CSV, right? And then I can bring up, you know, open that CSV in my favorite uh, CSV statistical software, such as Excel, right? And here, I can actually start to implement the maximal return keyword phrase 
method that we talked about in uh, previous lectures, right? So let me make this a little bigger for you so you can read it, right? So here I have um, search, min search volume, max search volume, competition, right? Um, so max search volume is already a number, so I don't have to do anything. But competition, right, is is not as a is a phrase, medium, high, low. So we might want to change that to a a number instead, right? We can go through here, and if you're smart in Excel, you can write like a little if statement that'll automatically do it. And then the other two things. So maximum return keyword phrase framework requires four things, right? It requires um, a search volume, which we have, it requires a competition, which we have, and then it requires a propensity to convert and a propensity to be a high value customer, right? So what we can do is we can go over to the end and add our own column names. Let me pull this over just a little bit so you can see it, right? Our own column names, propensity for propensity to be high, right? And we can we can basically get together as a group, right, with other with the other people in our in our marketing group in our company, and say, okay, so this word is digital marketing. Well, that one's really related to what we do, right? So we might say they're very likely to convert, but maybe they're you know that tends to be a word people just use when they first start looking. So maybe their propensity to be a high value customer is low, right? Uh, and then the next word is online marketing. That's also very similar, right? But maybe shows a more um, uh, a naive understanding. So we'll even go lower on the propensity to be high value. And then internet marketing, right? And again, you know, and eventually we could go down to a word like digital marketing agency. Well, that looks like maybe they're really likely uh, to convert and maybe willing to spend some money on me, right? Um, and so then, uh, and probably, probably actually now thinking about it, maybe these numbers should be lower on the propensity to convert, right? Three and three, right? And this is the most likely one because they're actually looking for an agency. So then I can create a little formula which simply takes the search volume, right? Divides it by the competition, multiplies it by the propensity to convert, and multiplies that by the propensity to be high value, right? I can copy that down, right? And now I have a score, right? Now the score has no units. It's not like it's, you know, the money I'm gonna make from bidding on that word, but it's a score by which I can relatively rank how important each of these keywords are, right? So it's just a particular technique for trying to figure out which keywords should we actually use? What are the most important for us? Um, and we can kind of use that to, to decide how we're gonna do organic search engine optimization, right? But also paid search engine optimization. So I hope this has been helpful for you and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks everybody.